In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how to use providers or services in Ionic 2. I'm uh, going to talk about when to go about creating your own custom providers. Uh, a provider can be used to uh, provide some kind of service to your application. It could be any range of things from fetching data to performing operations on data and things like that. Uh, but it can be a little bit difficult, uh, perhaps when you're just getting started, to figure out when an appropriate time is to use a provider or even how you go about creating them in general. So in this tutorial I'm going to look at just a really simple example, a really common scenario of how you might go about creating something without a provider and then I'm going to show you why it's a good idea to create a provider for that instead. So the example I'm going to use is just going to be a, a simple list um, that does, uh, displays maybe uh, posts or articles or something. Uh, so I've created an application already here, I've got that on screen. Uh, what I'm going to do now is jump into the editor. And I don't have any providers set up yet, uh, so I'm just going to go about coding this uh, without using a provider, and I'm going to show you what that looks like first. So the first thing we might do if we want to create a list of posts in our application here is we're going to need to have that data accessible somewhere, and we're going to need to loop over that data and display it in our template. Uh, we could of course just hard code the um, list into the template, uh, but I want to show you how this works with um, some dynamic data. So I'm going to come here first and I'm just going to create a, a new member variable and we'll just call that uh, posts. And just as a default we'll set that to uh, an empty array. And so now what we want to do is any posts that we have in this array, we want to display that in our template. Uh, so we can come to our template here, uh, we'll just get rid of this uh, boilerplate code, and we'll create uh, just a basic ion list. So we'll create an ion item as well. Uh, for now we'll just put some static data in there, I'll just say hello, and then we're going to loop over this item for each uh, post we have in our post array here. So we can use the ng4 uh, structural, directive, uh, structural directive here, which is going to loop over that for us, and it's going to create an ion item for each post we have. So we need to write let post, which will create a reference to a specific post of posts, which is the uh, array that we're looping over. So if I just save that now and we'll jump back into the browser to see if anything's happened. And all we have now is just a blank screen because we don't have any posts. So to simulate a sort of common scenario, I'm not going to define the uh, post directly in here. I'm going to create a little um, load method. So this way perhaps we're loading in some data from some server or anywhere rather than hard coding into our application. So I'm going to create a load method which is going to load the post for us and so when that method is called we will set a number of uh, posts in that post array so we'll just do this dot posts this dot posts equals and we'll just create a new array here rather than pushing them into it and we'll just create a few objects here uh, so we'll just give the post a title and a summary So we'll just create a few of those. Uh, we'll give them different data so that we can see that they're different. So by default now we're still not going to have any posts loaded, but once this load method is called, uh, we will then load that data into this dot posts. So then we'll be able to display it. So what we'll do for now is we'll add an ion view did load uh, lifecycle uh, life hook here. And so this triggers uh, after the view has uh, loaded, uh, which is where we want to do any kind of um, things we want to do for the setup of our page here. Uh, generally it's a good idea to avoid doing a lot of work in the constructor. So from here we'll just call this.load. So hopefully if we save this now we should see our posts get displayed in here. And of course we don't because I didn't actually um, change this yet. So we can see we've got five uh, items there now, uh, but we're not actually using the data from those items. Uh, so I'll just create an, an interpolation here. And so we can access the title through post.title. That's because we gave it a, uh, a reference of post there. So we can access an individual post uh, using this format. 
and I'll also access the summary. So we'll just output both of those. Uh, it's not going to be a pretty format or anything like that, but it should display the data. Okay, so you can see both the title and the summary is being displayed there now. So that's pretty, the code here is pretty simple, uh, easy to work with, and it doesn't really look like a problem right now. Uh, but let's say I have some more methods. Uh, maybe we have uh, an add an add item method so that we can add some kind of item to this array somehow. Uh, so this is going to uh, run some code. Uh, maybe it launches some kind of pop-up to enter an item or it goes to a new page. It does um, something, but at some point we need to pass some data into this function here that's going to add that to our post array. So I'm not going to actually worry about doing that here. We'll just say it's some code. I, I do have other tutorials on how to create a sort of to-do style application that covers stuff like this. So I'll link to that if you want to uh, take a look at a more in-depth example. But for now, I'm just focusing on the idea of uh, why a provider is uh, necessary. So we could have that add item function there. Maybe we have an edit item function. Maybe we've got a, a get uh, get item function that takes in a specific uh, ID so you can grab uh, maybe just the third post for example uh, maybe we have some kind of uh, reorder uh, function which is going to reorder that list for us um, it could go on like that so in the beginning it's quite simple but then we could have a whole bunch of stuff that we need to do with this list data uh, that's just clogging up our home page with all these functions and operations and uh, and potentially those functions could be quite in depth you could have a, a big complicated function that's doing some fancy logic that takes up 80 lines or something like that and you're just going to have this huge home page file uh, and then if you want to add other things to your home page maybe you don't just have a list you have some other things as well uh, this file is soon going to become very unmanageable and so the general sort of idea is that you don't want to do that kind of logic stuff in your um, in your uh, page components here like this instead you want to separate that out into its own uh, provider or service so that sort of abstracts it away from the page into its own little module that you can then make use of so that will have the benefit of cleaning up this code here we're not going to have such a complicated file uh, but as well as that it also allows you to then reuse that code easily in another page uh, the way this is set up now, this is very much tied into this page. So let's say if I create uh, another page where I want to display this posts data, I would have to just recode this all again, uh, copy and paste it over or something like that into the other page. Uh, but if I have a separate provider, I can just use that provider in both pages and access that functionality. So in general, try to keep the code you have in here for your uh, page components to just be uh, really basic things like hooking up, uh, say if you have click functions in here that call some function, uh, just have those you know, uh, event bindings set up with your template and just do really basic things and when you need to do something more complicated, abstract that out into a provider and then you can interact with that functionality from there. So this should more, more or less interface with things rather than uh, trying to do things itself. So what we're going to do now is uh, separate this code out into a, prov into a provider. So I'm going to show you how we could modify this so that it does the exact same thing, uh, but instead it's going to use a provider. So to create a provider, we can just use the uh, generate command from Ionic, the Ionic uh, command line interface. So I'm just going to stop running this now with a, by hitting control C, and then I'm going to generate a new provider by running Ionic G provider and we'll just call this uh, posts. So that's going to generate for us now and you may have seen it pop in over here and so this is our post provider uh, and now before we can use that we need to set it up in the app at uh, the apps module file so we're going to have to import that in here and then we just need to add it to the providers uh, array. Okay, so now let's take a look at how we're going to move all this into uh, the post file. So basically what I'm going to do is just copy and paste all of this. I'm going to cut that out and we're just going to paste it in here instead. 
Uh, we can get rid of the HTTP method, uh, the injection here, because we're not using that and we're not making a HTTP request, but uh, you may want to do that. Uh, we, we just have the posts um, defined locally here, uh, but you may want to make a HTTP request to load uh, posts from a local JSON file or, or from a server. So you may want to keep that, but we're just going to get rid of it because we don't need it. Okay, I'll just save that. And since we're trying to attach these uh, posts to a, a post member variable, we're also going to have to add that into our provider here, just like we did in the home page. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just create a member variable called posts and we'll just set it to an empty array by default. And so now this sort of has the same functionality that we defined in the home page, where once the load method is called, it's going to add those posts into this uh, member variable here. But we still need to get that uh, data into our home page, so, uh, the home page template here somehow. And so to do that, we're going to have to set up the provider in our home page. Uh, we don't actually need this post variable anymore uh, because we're handling it in the provider now. Uh, we can't call this dot load anymore because uh, that it doesn't exist in this file. Uh, but what we can do instead is we can import that provider that we just created. And we're going to have to uh, inject it into our constructor here as well. So we're just going to name this uh, post service. And now that's going to be accessible from anywhere within our uh, class here. So we don't want to call the load method in here anymore. We want to call the load method inside of the post service. So instead, we'll just access that through this dot post service dot load. So let's see what happens if we run the code as it is now. Uh, so I'll just serve it. Okay, so I've just got a uh, an error here. Looks like I've written the wrong path for the import. Uh, if we jump back into, uh, looks like the module file. Uh, I've written provider instead of providers. So we'll save that and try again. All right, so that's loaded up now, uh, but nothing is happening here. And that's because we still haven't quite finished what we need to do yet. So we've loaded the post service here. So hopefully that should be hitting this and loading in that uh, array of objects into the member variable. Uh, but the problem is that in our template, we're still referencing um, the post variable, which we used to have here. Uh, but that doesn't exist anymore. So what we need to do instead is reference the post uh, array in the provider instead. And so since we've uh, injected that here, that's going to be available to our template. So instead we can just do post service dot post and we can keep everything else the same. So we'll save that and take a look. And now you can see that our uh, items have come back here. So if we take a look at our home page now, we have a very, very simple um, class here. We've taken out all of the, the logic for the handling posts, loading them. Uh, we didn't actually do it, but also the logic for adding items and uh, editing items and doing whatever else uh, we need to do. All of that now lives in this provider. So we don't have to worry about it messing up our uh, code here. We don't have to scroll through tons of code when we're making simple changes. And we can now also use this wherever we want. Uh, so if I now go and make a uh, some kind of second page, I can just import that provider, uh, inject it into the constructor, and then I will have that data available in the template of the second page as well. And I can also call whatever functions I need to call on there. So if I had a button in here to add an item, I could just have a uh, add post function set up uh, as the click handler. So we would attach that to say uh, maybe a, a button we have in the header here. And then I just need to call this dot post service dot and what did we call the function? We've got add item. Uh, so that would probably take in an item here. And so then we would pass that item through uh, there. So we'd call add item uh, post. And this function would also accept a post in some form.
So now rather than having a, uh, a lot of code to handle doing things here, we just make a simple call to the post service and it handles it for us. So I hope that sort of demonstrates the benefits of, of using providers rather than doing things uh, directly in your uh, page components. If you find yourself uh, writing uh, the code for your say home page here or any page or component in your application, it's starting to get a little bit complicated. You're starting to do some uh, logic type stuff in there. Just think whether it would make sense to move that uh, functionality out into a provider instead. And if you do that along the way, if you do, th uh, do it as you go, uh, rather than trying to uh, fix things once you have a big mess of an application, it's gonna be a lot easier in the long run. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.